All right, we are talking about section 9-1, systems of equations. So first off, what is a system of equations? It's a set of two or more equations with the same unknowns or variables. All right, so let's see what an example is. It would be something like 2x subtract y equals 2 and x plus y equals negative 2. So the idea here is instead of just solving for one equation, one unknown, we have two equations and two unknowns. So to solve for this, we're going to find the pair of x and y where it's true for both. So it has to be true for both. There are three ways of how, how to solve. And those are, first way is graphing, the second way is substitution, and the third way is elimination. And there are actually three ways of how the answer can come out. Um, and that's, it's easiest to see those three ways when you look at the graphs. So we're first just going to start off with graphing. And for our example, um, we'll start with that same one that I just had, which was 2x subtract y equals 2 and x plus y equals negative 2. And we're going to solve this by graphing. All right, so obviously to graph, we want to put these both into y equals form. So I'll start with this one up top. I'm going to actually just add the y over to the other side. And then subtract the 2. So we have our first equation in y equals. I'll do the same thing here. I just need to solve for y. So all I have to do here is subtract the x to the other side. All right, so we have our other one. So I just need to graph these two. Now I am able to graph these by hand. Um, but since I want to find an exact point, I'll actually just graph it on the calculator later so I can see um, an exact point. Hang on, let me go get that. Alright, so how to graph these in the calculator? I'll just put them both into the y equals. So we have y equals 2x subtract 2, so I put that into y1. And then in y2, I'll put negative x subtract 2. And just hit graph, and we should have the graph of these two. All right, so it came out looking something like th this, with a graph here, graph here. Okay, that picture did not turn out good. Let's try that again. So we had a graph here and a graph here. All right, so the whole point of solving a system is to find the x and the y where they, um, the x and y that's true for both. So let's think, true for both. So share the same, both. So that would be here, the point where they intersect. So that one point where they intersect is the x and y that makes both of the e equations true. So if we look a little closer at our graph, we see that that is at the point, not sure if you can see that, at 0, negative 2. So that is our answer. That is the x and y pair that makes both of these true. So in this case, um, our answer just came out as one solution. 
So we know we only had one solution. Um, so if th this happens, we like cross once, there's one answer. We say that the system is consistent. Um, we also say that the that the equations are independent. So it's consistent, meaning the, the system makes sense, it has an answer, and they're independent because they're two separate equations, and they just happen to cross once. So that is the first example of graphing. It's also an example of one type of way that the answer can come out. All right, we're on example B of graphing, and the problem is... 3x plus 2y equals 3, and 3x plus 2y equals negative 4. All right, so we'll start this the same way we did the other ones. We'll just have these both set equal to y. So if we look at the top here, we can just subtract the 3x and then divide the Two. All right, and then here, do the same thing, just subtract the 3x and divide the 2. So 4 over 2 is 2. All right, so again, I could easily graph these by hand, but since our goal is to see exact points and to see exactly what's going on, I'll just go ahead and type them in. Again, I'm just putting the first one into y1 and the second one into y2. So I draw the graph and it ends up like this trying to get a good camera ang angle here all right so we see the lines are parallel which we actually should have known before we actually graph this because they have the same slope so they have the same slope they're parallel so our goal here is to find the answer to find the solution to this system so before we talked about, it was this point where the two lines crossed. Obviously, these are parallel. They won't ever cross. So that tells us there's no pair X and Y that is true for both. We just can't think of any pair. There is no pair X and Y that will make both of these true. So instead, we just say no solution. It could also be called the empty set um, or use the symbol of a circle with a line. Right. So if it has no solution, here we say the system is inconsistent. Also, that um, the equations are still independent. They're, they're still two separate e equations. All right, we're going to move on to ex example C. We're still going to work on graphing. Our example here is x subtract y equals negative 3, and 2x subtract 2y equals negative 6. So again, we'll do the same thing, just put these into y equals form. So for the one on top here, 
I just need to add the Y to the other side. Then I'll add this three. All right, there we go. Here, I'll just um, add the two Y. And add the six. Now I'm um, going to divide by 2. So x plus 3 equals y. So here, although they ended up n not being the same, after we reduced and simplify, we see that these are the same thing. So our actual graph would just be one line. It's the ex exact same. So it's x plus 3, so it'll look something like this. So now, how to think about this solution. So just remember, the solution is where the two lines cross. These are the exact same, so it's kind of like one line is just right on top of the other. So they cross, or they intersect, at every single point on this line here. So if this is the case, we say there are infinitely many solutions. We also say that this system is consistent. Because there is an answer, there is an outcome. But here, the equations are dependent. They're the same thing. They depend on each other. All right, so those are the three examples for graphing. So we saw the options were they would either be one outcome, meaning that they crossed once. There could be no solution, meaning the lines were parallel, they didn't cross at all, or it could, could turn out the lines are the exact same, so they were infinitely many. So those are the three types of ways that these systems could turn out. Okay, we're going to move on to our second way how to solve, which is substitution. And the steps for this are, you're going to pick out one of the variables and solve for it and then you're going to substitute that result into the other e equation. So the important part here is that you're going to put it into the other one. All right, let's see an example of substitution. It will be 4x subtract 3y equals 14 and x subtract 2y equals 1. All right, so step one is do pick any of the unknowns to solve for. So here you actually have four choices. You would solve for this x, th th this y, this x, or that y. So any of the, of the four you pick, it should come out correct. But my hint to you is just pick out the one that's the easiest. So here, the easiest one would probably be this x since it's on, on its own. All right, so I'm just going to solve for this x. So I just need to add the 2y to the other side. So I have x equals 2y plus 1. All right, step two. You're going to take this result and plug it into the other equ equation. So we know that x equals this. So since x equals that, I can plug this whole thing in for the other x. So I'll plug this entire result in for the other x. So I now have 4 times 2y plus 1 subtract 3y equals 14. So now I've created something that is just one equation with only one unknown. So now I can just solve for y. So I have 8y plus 4, subtract 3y equals 14. So I have 5y plus 4 equals 14. 
5y equals 10. So then y equals 2. All right, so we know that y is 2. So now I can just plug that result of y equals 2 back in, into here. So I have that x equals 2y plus 1. So that just came from here. And I know that y is 2. So I'll have x equals 2 times that 2 I just solved for, plus 1. So x equals 5. So we'll put our answer in an ordered pair. So it goes in order, x comma y. So our answer is 5 comma 2. So that is our solution. So we see this was a consistent system that just had one an an answer. Alright, we're now going to see an example of elimination. So here, the steps for this are you will eliminate a variable by adding the equations together. Um, so that may seem strange, so I want to show a quick ex example of that. Say I had 2x plus 3y equals 4, and then say 8x subtract 3y equals 2. If I were to add these together, what I mean by that is I'll just add the x's, add the y's, add, add the constants. So if I add these two, um, 2x plus 8x is 10x, plus 3y, subtract so 3y, cancels each other out, and then 4 plus 2 equals 6. So with th that, I was able to cancel out those y's. I just have an equation with an x, and from now I can solve. I know that x equals 6 over 10. So that right there is just a quick example of that. But obviously, this example worked out nice and easy because it was set up plus 3y subtract 3y. Obviously, they're not always going to be like that. So let's add some notes here. So you might have to multiply first. So on something like this, it's pre-set up. We didn't have to multiply. But if it is not like that, then we will have to multiply first so that it is something like that that can be canceled out. All right, let's see a more complex example then. How about um, 2x plus 3y equals negative 1, and 3x subtract 2y equals 18. Okay, so here we don't have a nice clean pair that will automatically cancel itself out. So instead, now we're going to have to multiply. Now, it may seem strange that I'm just allowed to multiply these things, but remember, these are equal. So as long as I multiply the left-hand side and the right-hand side by the same thing, it'll be okay. So here I'm seeing I should probably work with the y's. I don't have to, but it might be a little bit easier since they're currently 1 being a plus and 1 being a minus. So my goal is to change these so that they will cancel each other out. So I'm seeing here, well... If I multiply this by 2, it'll turn into plus 6y. If I multiply this by 3, it'll turn into subtract 6y. So if I can turn this into plus 6y, this into subtract 6y, then they will cancel each other out. Let's see, I'm going to 
multiply this whole thing by 2 and this whole thing by 3. So when I mean the whole, when I say the whole thing, I mean the whole thing. You have to multiply every single part. That's the only way that it can stay truly equal. So up top we have 4x plus 6y equals negative 2. On the bottom we have 9x subtract 6y equals, let's see, 18 times 3. So 54. Alright, so we're going to add these. So 4x plus 9x, 13x. The plus 6y subtract 6y, that cancels itself out, and that equals to 52. So now we just have to do 52 divide by 13. So we know x is equal to 4. Alright, so after we have x e equal to 4, you can either pick this or this doesn't matter, it'll come out the same. Plug the x back in and see what y is. So let's see, we have 2x plus 3y equals negative 1. So we have 2 times 4. So there, I knew x was 4, so I plugged that in. Now I just have to solve for that y. So 8 plus 3y equals negative 1. So 3y equals negative 9. So there we have y. So again, we'll put our answer in an ordered pair. And we have a consistent system with one solution. All right, so far all the ex examples that you've seen have had just one order pair come out as an answer. So I would like to show you how the ones that come out as either infinitely many or no solution, kind of how those turn out. Here our example is 7x plus 3y equals negative 5, negative 14x subtract 6y equals negative 10. Alright, so here again I'm going to scan. While I'm seeing here, if I multiply this by 2, it'll cancel out here. So I'll multiply the whole thing by 2. So I have 14x plus 6y equals negative 10. Then negative 14x subtract 6y equals negative 10. If I add these, well, the plus 14x subtract 14x, that's just 0. Plus 6y subtract 6y, that's also just 0. Negative 10 plus negative 10 is negative 20. So I end up with something that says 0 equals negative 20. Well, we obviously know that statement is false. That just can't happen. There's no way that that's true. If you end up with something like that, that is your hint that this problem is a no solution or the empty set. So if you are going through the problems and end up with something like this, which you know is for sure false, then you know that it is no solution. Now please don't get confused sometimes when people end up with something like 2x equals z zero, they put that down as a no solution, but remember, just divide both sides by two, you know, x is equal to z zero. So something like this is possible if x is z zero, but down here, since there is no x, we know it's impossible that 
0 and negative 20 are equal. All right, let's look at negative 9x plus 3y equals negative 24, and 3x subtract y equals 8. All right, so again here I'm saying, hmm, if I were to multiply this by 3, then these will cancel out. So multiply the whole thing by 3. So I'll keep the top the same. And then here, this will change to 9x. Subtract 3y equals 24. So if I add these, this cancels to 0. This cancels to 0. This also cancels to 0. So I end up with 0 equals 0. So something like this is always true. So you end up with 0 equals 0, or 8 equals 8, or 10 equals 10. Any statement that's always true, you know that this is the type that has infinitely many solutions. So now we haven't really talked about yet how to write the answer for this. We've just said it has infinitely many, but haven't really talked about what those solutions are. What pattern do they form? So let's first talk about it graphically. We know that these form the same line. So let's, I'm not sure that this is the exact line, but let's just say they both form this line here. I think sometimes that students think infinitely many means every x, y, that it means all real x, y pairs that there possibly are, but that is not the case. Infinitely many does not mean every. It means there's an infinite amount, but not every single pair on this coordinate plane is an answer. Um, the answers are all of the points that are actually on the l l line here. So yes, there are infinitely many of them, but it's not every single pair. So we can't say infinitely ma many every x comma y because that is not true. It's only the specific points that are on this l line here. So to give our answer, there's actually a um, a couple of ways of how this answer could be given, but I will show you the way that your online homework does, is to still give it as an ordered pair, but to give it in terms of y. So we know a typical ordered pair, the spot that goes here is x, the spot that goes here is y. So how, how to say, oh, it's every pair that's on this line. One possible way is just to keep the spot for y, just keep it as y. Now here's the trick. Instead of just putting x, because it, it isn't just every x, we're going to put x in terms of y according to this. So all we have to do is pick either this first equation or the second and solve for x. So I'll just pick here. So I have 3x subtract y equals 8, and I'm planning to solve for x. So 3x equals 8 plus y. So x equals 8 plus y over 3. So that tells me what x is in terms of of the y on these um, lines here. So in the x spot, I'll put 8 plus y over 3. So now the actual answer, you don't need these x, y's that I put. I just put them there to show 
you the actual answer would just be that ordered pair there. It's saying every ordered pair that takes on this form um, is a solution to these. All right, so all of the problems that we've seen so far have just been two equations, two unknowns. So now I'll show you an ex example where there are three equations and three unknowns. So here we're going to talk about solving for a system with three unknowns. So your first step will be to pick two of the equations and clear out one of the variables. So pick two equations and eliminate one of the variables. Then after that, you'll pick a different pair of, equa of equations, but you will eliminate the same variable. All right, so that is our directions. Let's see an example. So here we'll look at 3x plus 4y minus 2z equals 14. 2x plus y plus 2z equals negative 9. x minus y plus z equals negative 9. All right, so step one, you'll pick any pair of two. And then after you pick your pair, you'll pick either X, Y, or Z to clear out. So you actually have lots of options here. You could pick the first two and clear out the X's. You could pick the first and third and clear out the Y's. You can pick any that you want. But my hint to you is to pick ones that are easy. So here I'm seeing the two that will be easy are to do the two Z's here, because they will automatically cancel, or to do the two Y's here. So it's really up to you. Um, I'll just pick to do these two Z's. So I just have, and I'll use a new color, so easy to tell. Let's do 3x plus 4y, subtract 2z equals 14, and 2x plus y plus 2z equals negative 9. All right, so here we'll just add. So 3x plus 2x is 5x, 4y plus y is 5y, the z's cancel, and we end up here with 5. Now I'm going to hold on to th th this because we will come back to that. All right, so now step two. You're going to pick a different pair. So since I chose equation 1 and 2 for here, for my next step, I have to choose either 1 and 3 or 2 and 3. So you have to pick a new pair but we still have to take out Z. So you kind of look at, at your pairs and see which pair will be easier to take out Z. So I'm seeing here probably one and three. 
So all I'll, all I'll have to do is multiply th th this by two, so that th then I can get rid of z. z. So I will keep equation w w one as is. So you guys, it's probably hard, hard to see, so I'm gonna switch to b black. 3x plus 4y subtract 2z equals 14. Now equation three, I'm gonna multiply by two. So 2x subtract 2y plus 2z equals negative 18. All right, let's add these. So here, 3x plus 2x is 5x. 4y subtract 2y is plus 2y. The z's cancel. That is equal to negative 4. I'm going to hold on to that. Now we see I have here in the boxes two equations with two unknowns. Well, we know how to solve two equations with two unknowns. So now we just have to solve these two equations with two unknowns. So I'm seeing here we'll have a positive 5x and positive 5x. So if I just multiply these three by negative 1, that, that, that will be easy to cancel. So let's take all these and subtract 5x, subtract 5y, subtract 5. All right, let's add these. The x's cancel. Then I have subtract 3y, we'll subtract 9. Now I just have to solve for y. So y equals 3. Now guys, to find your first unknown is the hardest part. Obviously, this was quite a bit of work to get to here. But now that we're here, it's a lot quicker from here. So we found our y. To find our um, x, we can either plug it in to here or here. Um, I'll just plug it in into here. So I have 5x plus... All right, guys. All right, the camera cut out. So we're at, at the point here where we have solved for y. So now we're going to plug that in to see what x is. Now I erase this over, over here, so I'm just going to plug it in into here. So I have 5x plus 2 times 3 equals track 4. So then we'll just continue to solve for x. All right, so we have that x equals negative 2. Okay, so we have x and we have y, so all we have to find is z. So to find z, you go back to the 3 that you started off with here. You just pick 1, you plug in x and y, and then find z. So I'll just plug it in into here. So we know x. We know why we're trying to find z. So you just continue on until you find z. So how to give these answers is also in the form of an or ordered pair, and it goes in order. So you do x, y, z. So our ordered pair would be x, y, Z. All right, so that is how to solve for a system with three equations and three unknowns. Um, there is one thing that I just want to show you, and that is how, um, if the answer is infinitely many, how to set up that ordered pair. Alright, so let's see another example here. 
it'll be 2x plus y subtract 3z equals 0. 4x plus 2y subtract 6z equals 0. And x subtract y plus z equals 0. All right, I want to start off the same way. We're just going to pick 2 and cancel one un unknown out. I'm seeing here that the plus y subtract y here will cancel out. So I will just do um, add together 1 and 3. So I'll keep 2x plus y subtract 3c, 3z equals 0 the same. Also x subtract y plus z equals 0 the same. All right, let's add these up. So we get 3x, the y's cancel. Subtract so 2z equals 0. All right, let's hold on to that. Okay, since I used 1 and 3, I have to pick now a different pair. But I still have to take out the y's. So I'll probably use 2 and 3 and just multiply this by 2. So I'll keep equation 2 the same. And equation 3, I'll multiply by 2. Alright, let's add these. So we have 6x, the y's cancel. Subtract 4z equals 0. Alright, now I'm going to look at these two. So I'm seeing here, well, if I multiply this by negative 2, it should cancel. So I'll multiply this by negative 2. So I have subtract 6x plus 4z equals 0. Let's add these up. These cancel, these cancel, so I have 0 equals 0. So I have that case here where it's always true. 0 equals 0 is always true. So here's where um, it gets a little bit complex of how to write out the answer. We know the answer is infinitely many. Remember, we can't say every single XYZ pair, because it's not. It's only the XYZ pairs that fit this pattern here. So I just want to clear up some spit face. So I'm going to erase this. So we, we know that the answer should be in the form. Here's the X spot. Here's the Y spot. Here is the Z. Now, honestly, you could pick for any of these, but the online homework asked to solve for Z. So I will keep Z in terms of Z. Now I have to get all of these, X and Y, also in terms of Z. So the easiest place to start is here because it's only Z and X. So here I'm just going to solve for X in terms of Z. Z. So let's see, we can add the 4z. So I have 6x, so, sorry, 6x equals 4z. And then remember, I'm trying to solve for x. So x equals 4z over 6. So x equals 2z over 3. So we know that x is 2z over 3. So in the x spot, I will put 2z over 3. All right, so we have to now solve for y. Clear off for some room here. Okay, to solve for your y, we'll have to use an equation that has all three. Use x, subtract y, plus z. 
We know that x is 2z over 3. Why is the thing we're trying to solve for? We'll keep z as z. That's equal to 0. So here, we want to solve for this y here. So I'll add it to the other side. So we have 2z over 3 plus z, and that equals to y. Okay, so 2 thirds plus 1, so I'll just have to combine, so that is 5z over 3 equals y. How I got the 5 over 3 was just 2 over 3 plus 1. Alright, so in the y spot, I'll put 5z over 3. Now for your actual answer, you do not need these x, y, z's. I just put those there to help, help, help us out. So the actual answer is here. All right, that is the end of section 9-1.